boy chat star k you now tune into my one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview with dme tv it's mob trap star what's good bro what's going on my dude same shit man same shit different hustle true 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 so that's how we gonna start this off today being a this is our first, this, this, this me and your first real sit down conversation, the whole nine and shit like that. So we about to get in depth. For the fans out there and becoming new fans, let them know who Trap Star Kev is, bro. Um, my name is Trap Star Kev. I'm, I'm a ward of the state. I'm a rap artist. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm in Myrtle Beach. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Myrtle Beach. I'm getting a nice little um, welcoming down here with my music and everything. Um, but um, I feel like I'm a product of of a, a crew environment, and I'm I'm the average story. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna act like my story pretty much any different than what anybody else going through. For real, for real. It's just that you know it's a different take. It's a different outcome. Um, you feel what I'm saying? I feel like I beat a lot of shit that I shouldn't have beat. I, I was able to prosper a lot of things that I shouldn't have and that's where the name Trap Star actually came from like it's not even from me having 20 and 30 bricks put up or a bunch of money or nothing it was because I was always the nigga that had the least but did the most with the least you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah. so it was like motherfuckers recognized that so they started that's how I really got the name for real for real because you would have thought I had a million dollars then, but I, yeah, I just, yeah. it was just because of, and I made do with what I had, you feel what I'm saying? Right. So that's kind of how I picked up the name, and that's a big part of who I am, just making do with the circumstances that I've been given, the cards I've been dealt, and making the best out of it. Yeah, yeah. So what was, uh, what was your introduction into the music game? Like, how did you get your start? Or how did you know, like, you know what, I'm gonna fuck with this rap shit, you know what I'm saying? Yo, real shit is cliche as it might sound, bro. Like. I've been, I've been, like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I've, all my life. Like, music is who I am for real. Like, it's deeper than just, you feel what I'm saying? Like, like, I can go back to, I was in a group. <laughs> like, real shit, I was in a group when I was like fucking four or five with my, me, my older sister, and my, my older cousin, you feel what I'm saying? Like, we, we rap, we sing, we do all that. We was doing covers at the time, like we was kids, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, yeah. our uncle was managing us and all, like I always had a passion for music, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I still remember my first rap I ever wrote. I ain't gonna say it, cause that shit whack yeah, as fuck, yeah, yeah. you feel me? But I still like, it been that long though, you feel what I'm saying, bro? But before I really started recording, believe it or not, I, I got, I was doing poetry for real, so like, yeah. I got published poems, you feel what I'm saying? From when like I was a juvenile and stuff, I was right, that's how I really got into it. Yeah. And yeah. once I started from that platform, it was like I did some spoken word, you feel what I'm saying? I did some, you know, different little um auditorium type of platforms, like with my with my you feel what I'm saying? So yeah, but that's really how I got my start, bro, for real, for real, like, and that's that's who I am as an artist. I'm Trap Star Kev. Um, I've been in the music since and wanting to do music since I could remember. Like, that's always been a passion and a goal of mine. So, to still be able to say I'm pursuing it to this day is, you feel what I'm saying? What, at, at what age did you leave Baltimore and um, move to down here? Believe it or not, I just left Baltimore um, two years ago. Sure, but sure. that in itself is a whole, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Baltimore, I wasn't born in Baltimore, you feel what I'm saying? I was born in Delaware. Okay. But once I, I fell into the, the the foster care system, that's where the the name, the ward of the state comes from. And that's um, the mixtape, the, obviously the name of the mixtape. Yeah. So it's kind of like that journey and you feel me, a tale of me going through my journey from starting off in foster care to being sent to Pittsburgh, because that was the first place, that was the first city that I went to in foster care was Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I was 12 years old. Then I've been in Allentown, Pennsylvania, Franklin, um, Philly, Salisbury, Maryland, Elkland. I was just everywhere and I was a runaway at the same time. So it was like, I, I went, they sent me to Pittsburgh. I was there for like maybe two weeks and I ran away. You yeah, feel me? Yeah. I ain't had no family or I ain't no nobody in Pittsburgh. So it was like, uh, 
a harsh it was like a harsh lesson like i i was and i was out there for like two months yeah, Damn, yeah. you feel what i'm saying and like i experienced a lot you feel what i'm saying i had to to make decisions as an adult as a child you feel what i'm saying and they wasn't a lot of the right shit so i yeah, fell into yeah. that that system that's what i'm saying like my story not really no different than what i feel like a lot of people go through i just want to shed light on you feel what i'm saying okay. shed light on it and hopefully my music can touch somebody that's been through it you feel what i'm saying yeah. and it can affect them and it can help them see something different or change or whatever because it's a it's a growing process you feel me and that's all the water the state is about yeah. for those yeah. who don't know you feel me water the state dropping soon trap star kid facts facts the first time I met you, we was in uh, Georgetown at a New Music Wednesday, and you 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 premiered the song 23 and 1. Mm -hmm. And when I first heard it, I was like, yeah, my man, shit, got he, you can you can hear it in every line, you know what I mean? Like shit, real, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like bring me back through the thought the thought process of that song, like when you first wrote that song, uh, even like the whole the story. The mind, I mean, like I understand the mind frame, but for a fan that don't know. Like, right. explain the mind frame that you were in when you wrote that song. All right. First and foremost, I wrote that song in Jeff. Yeah. Facts. Um, my mind frame, and it's crazy because I was, in, I was sitting in jail. If you listen to the song, I was facing attempted murder charge. Um, I've been exonerated of it since then. But um, at the time, my mindset was um, I had writer's block, bro. Like facts, that's the crazy part. Like I could the whole time, I, I, cause I got held, I was okay. So they held me for 60 days without a bell. You feel me? So the whole time, like it was distress, it was too much. I ain't know yeah. what was going on. So I couldn't even write, bro. I had so much in me though. Like I was going through it, you feel me? Like it was already looking good. Then with the music and then this came. So it was like, yeah. you feel me? Another roadblock. So it was like, damn. So I couldn't even write. And um, I ended up going to court after 60 days going up for bail and they granted me a bail. When they granted me a bail, they put me on the monitor, the ankle monitor, to make sure I wouldn't jump, skip bail, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But um, it was all good. They give me a bail. Now mind you, 60 days, bro. And this is what I'm trying to shed light on because like I said, let's go back a couple sentences. I've been exonerated since then, okay? So let me tell you how they did me. They held me without a bail for 60 days. 60 days, no bail, right? Then I go up for bail. When I go up for bail, they put all these crazy stipulations on me. Luckily, shout out my man, Al Cool Crew. He come to Crew, he speak on my behalf. They say I can travel, do shows. That's how I was even able to come to yeah. Georgetown that time. You feel what I'm saying? I was on a the monitor then. Yeah. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? But um, I get back to the prison. They give me a bail. $50,000 um, cash um, surety. Bell paid on the spot. That's all he was waiting for. Yeah. Bell get paid. You know what they did to me, bro? They held me for a whole nother week saying I had to wait for an ankle monitor after they took my money. So that's where the song came. Like, now I'm ready for y'all. Now, like, yeah. I, you feel what I'm saying? So it just came out. And the crazy thing is, half of it, I'm walking laps with my man at. Half of it, just 23 m that's the hook came from just me yeah, walking yeah, and it yeah. just came in they want to see me done Fuck the, t the prosecutors the whole system yeah and the rest of it i went and pinned it and it was like if you hear it i was in jail but if you hear it, my mindset was already on the streets yeah like i was yeah. so red like i was just so fed up with everything and then they held me for another week the sheriff office was like playing games with my paperwork the people who had my um, bracelet was ready to come put me on a bracelet ASAP, bro. They been, they was like, okay, we ready. We All we waiting for is the file to get faxed. It yeah. took them people a week to fax my file, to push a button to send my file so I can get out and do what I got to do. And I say all that to say, since then, I got found exonerated. I didn't go, had to go to trial for that shit, bro. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So this is the type of shit I'm trying to shed light on because I'm not the only one that been through that. You yeah, feel what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah. they do it so wrong and so dirty and then it's just supposed to be hard. That's crazy. I've been going through that shit all my life, bro. I was awarded the state, meaning the state was my legal guardian, my nigga, yeah, until yeah. I was 18 years old. Yeah. The state, not nobody, not a person. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Hey. 
the state, bro. So all these times I would run away, and cause I was I was young, I was I was I always had authority problems, but I was going through what I was going through. I ain't want to be here. I'm leaving. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. be. I don't know these people. I'm not here. What are you talking about? I got a better chance on the streets by myself. How I felt. Yeah. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. They catch me, pick me up. I don't. I ain't even have to have a charge, bro. I'm going to jail, my nigga. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm sitting, and then you gotta understand. I'm a teenager, right? So you know, kids is cruel as fuck. So I'm sitting in jail, bro. I ain't, ain't got no crook. They so what the fuck you in jail for? I'm making shit up. I'm lying just so niggas ain't looking at cause I'm cause I'm waiting for another foster home. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't got nowhere to go, yeah. and these motherfuckers trying to find another somewhere else to ship me to. And to, you feel what I'm saying? But that's the shit I was going yeah, through. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? So when I um when I spit my you feel me my my story or whatever, I be hoping that it's a nigga going a young boy out there that's going through that. You feel me? A young boy out there that know how that shit feel, cause I know how that shit feel. The the um have to make decisions. You feel what I'm saying? Because of your circumstances for no other reason. Yeah. You feel me? Not cause you're a bad person. Or you a bad guy, you was raised a certain way or none of that. But because of your circumstances and your environment, I gotta do like it's you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all I feel like I can say is this is what I did. Yeah. That got me through. I'm not saying my story no though. I'm just saying, listen, man, this is what I did. And like me and my brother laughed because we got a saying and it's true. Our shit always works sometimes. That's what we yeah, say. Our yeah. shit always works sometimes. Meaning, as long as we keep you feel me, so that's what I that's what I'm trying to show people. Like this worked for me. Yeah. It might not, I'm not saying it's gonna work for everybody. I'm not saying I'm special. I'm not saying that my circumstances was any special or, or none of that. I'm just saying that this is what I've been through, like a lot of other people, and yo, I think I figured out some shit that might work for niggas. You yeah. feel me? Like I gotta let people Put them on, you feel what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing with the music. I'm hustling, bro. Thanks. I'm hustling music, I'm hustling words, I'm hustling my story, you feel what I'm saying? Not just because I'm trying to get monetary gain out of it because I really feel like niggas might can use some benefit out of that shit, you yeah, feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like some, you feel me, real shit. Hell yeah, that's real shit. Cause I know if I was, if I had a, a older, and I did, that's the crazy part. I had older niggas around, but they ain't mean me no fucking good, bro. Yeah. You feel me? You got to think I was 12. Let me tell you something. This real shit. I was 12 years old. I ran away in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Right? So the first thing I did is the first, I, I stole a pack. This is the first pack. I stole a pack. This is the first, uh, as a kid, right? I see a D-boy, he got the, he got his pack on it. He put the pack in a fucking uh, um, potato chip bag and sat it down. Me being a young boy, I'm on him. You feel what I'm saying? I circle all the way around the block, come through the alley, jump the gate, all that. Yeah, Pick yeah. the pack up. It's like every bit of 500 dimes of hard in it. Great. A coat in a, in, a, in a pack. I'm 12, I'm in Pittsburgh, I don't know nobody. You know what I did, bro? As a 12 year old, I had to make a decision as a man, but I don't know. So you know what I did? I walked up to the corner store. The first nigga I seen that looked like he was getting money, I went and tried to sell it to him. Yeah. You know what the nigga did? He gave me $100. Damn. For all that shit. I didn't know then. You yeah. know what I did with that hundred dollars? I went to the fucking corner store and bought I was I was on a you feel me? Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. ran away. Yeah. I'm trying I went and got snacks and shit, you yeah. feel me? As a tour yo. But guess what the old head did? He took me up under his wing now and guess what I'm doing? What you think he put me on? Yeah. B and I'm going and everything now. Yeah. He found him he took care of me too, showed me a lot of shit. You feel me? But that's the type of niggas I, I had that that's the influence I got. Yeah. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. Off of my environment, I had, you feel me, I, I'm trying to get some money, I'm trying to get something to eat, you feel me? I meet a nigga in the corner store that don't really mean me no good, but he act like he did, you feel me? Next thing you know, I'm breaking in every house on the block, you yeah. feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't breaking in houses and shit, like, you feel me? Yeah, I stole the, um, the D-boy work and all that, but that was, that's, that's survival kicking in. Yeah. I ain't no, yeah. bro, at the time, this is the crazy part, the time they had payphone and shit, I remember I walked to a payphone. And y'all called my folks way in another state, you feel yeah. me? Like, I was lost out that bitch, bro, for yeah. real. And I I, I kind of was influenced by the first motherfucker who act like, you feel me, they was going to sure. give a fuck about a motherfucker. Yeah. And what I'm trying to do is be that same type of person, but really give a fuck. Like, I really give a fuck about not just 
the youth by our people, you feel what I'm saying? I yeah. really bet, like, the system that they put us in, bro, is crazy, bro. Right. Now, and I, I think I see it different because I always, I was in the belly of the beast. All my life, I was in that shit. Yeah. So I see how they play the, the manipulation and the psychology and, and all that shit. Like, that shit crazy, and it's all it's, it's meant to do is spread discord amongst us as yeah. people. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? That's real. So I'm just on some shit, like... If you hear my tape, it's a lot of that in there. Yeah, it's a lot of um, some. It's harsh. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. You yeah. feel me? But you got my my approach always been aggressive because of my environment. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? But my approach always been real too. You feel what I'm saying? And like it's genuine and I'm passionate. So yeah. It don't matter what it is. If I'm passionate about it, you gonna get that that passionate trap. You feel what I'm saying? That's just how it go. You feel me? But the word of the state is it's not just about me it's about it's about a message and it's about a lot of people bro yeah yeah you feel me i'm just i'm just telling it i'm just saying it i'm just saying what a lot of motherfuckers wish they could say or already saying you feel what i'm saying mm -hmm. i'm saying what a lot of motherfuckers is really feeling on the inside anyway fuck 12 who everybody feel like that not because we don't feel like the police um we their job not it ain't even about it's because they have no respect for us yeah they don't have you if you ever if you ever had a real interaction or in inter, like you ever had to deal with these motherfuckers bro that's why i say fuck 12. i say fuck 12 because 12 say fuck me the way they treat a nigga yeah off yeah. the rip you feel what i'm saying niggas ain't walking around saying oh um fuck doctors you feel what i'm saying doctors <laughs> save lives bro yeah doctors it. got a fucking perp like a lot of these motherfucking cops out here, and I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them, bro. They gonna stereotype you. They gonna put you in a box. They gonna, bro, it's real. Real. Yeah. Like, and, and I understand why, like, that's, it's a lot of fear that play a part in it, but that don't give you the right to treat a person less than who they are or what they are as a person. You right. feel me? And that's what we go through, and I'm trying to shed light on that, too. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm real big on that. Like, I'm about, a, like, I got a lot of messages behind my music. It might just sound angry, but I'm about youth reform. I'm about a lot. You feel what I'm saying? For real, yeah, for real. Yeah. A lot of that shit touched base with me, for real, because I know. You feel me? So I'm I'm all for that, for real. Facts. So, goddamn, you, you, you made your way back down to Myrtle Beach. You made your way to Myrtle Beach. Shout with, out Myrtle like, Beach. Yeah. Like, how that whole thing, I mean, well, I don't, I don't, you don't got to get all in the depth and shit, but like, how was that? I'm going to say it like how this. I came transition? to Myrtle Beach. I got family in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Okay. I got sisters, my dad's side of the family, they all from down here. Mm -hmm. This is my first time ever living here, but it was really just supposed to be for the summer, bro. I just can't like work here. Like it wasn't even supposed to be no long term yeah. shit. Yeah. It was just supposed to be, I'm coming down. You feel what I'm saying? I'm going, it's the summertime. I'm going to reorganize my life a little bit. You feel what I'm saying? And, and with a new approach and shit. You feel what I'm saying? And we're going to go from there. And then I'm going to go back home. And whoop, whoop, and I came down here and everything took off, bro. Like, I yeah. never looked back. Right. Like, that's a big, like, shit crazy. Like, you feel what I'm saying? I linked up with Al. Once I, man, I ain't even meet in, the, in Myrtle Beach. We met in Wilmington, North Carolina. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? But yeah. like certain shit started to kick into play. You feel me? Some money started rolling it. You feel what I'm saying? It was like shit. You feel what I'm saying? Damn, you, hey, you feel me? And by the end of the summer, I was, you feel me? I, I got a crib now. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like shit, I'm not, you, I'm going to see what it's going, what it's going to take me. Yeah. So I yeah. shout, I give the beach a lot of my credit. Like, you feel me? Baltimore put me through, through the, through the, it made me a man, and it, but I give the, the credit to my success to coming to the beach for real. Like, yeah. I was doing the music and all that in Baltimore, and I hit the market, and I had some people fucking with me and all that, looking at me and all that, but the type of success I'm having here is, like, the market is, like, totally open to, like, I'm about to start repping the beach. Like, what the fuck is you doing? Like, this is, this, yeah, like, yeah. where, like, home where the heart at type shit. But right. I love it down here, bro. Like, and I be telling my niggas from 
back home in the city, like, we got, like, we moving niggas in by the drones, you feel me? Like, bro, it's the same shit that in the city without the hustle and hustle. That's how I, that's how I preach that to my niggas. Like, I'm coming.